Hey guys, this is John. All right, it's another Clock as a Weapon game. Five games, in fact. I'm playing against NM Trenador Brazil in the first one. Opening with E4. Let's play a open Sicilian. Again, the focus is on speed, trusting those instincts. I'm pretty amped up to play this session. I haven't been to the gym. As you know, if you've been watching the last couple of these videos, uh, I've been experimenting a little bit playing after a session at the gym, but I have not been there today yet. Uh, Bishop d5 seems interesting. I'm going to play that. We'll get a trade. Maybe I can use the c6 square somehow. Let's play a3. This pawn could be a liability on d5, but we'll see how this shapes up. Maybe bishop g5. Black's looking to go knight c4, so it seems logical to put pressure here. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's just shift the king over. Knight takes b5, awfully tempting as well. Okay, here, hmm, knight c4 could be an issue. Uh, let's see. f4 looks a little too forcing. I'm going to do something interesting here. I'm going to bait him into taking this pawn. Let's see if I can run this h-pawn and open up black's king. This looks like fun. Okay, knight comes back. d5 is loose. I should probably attend to that. Bishop h6 also possible, though, still. See some fun ideas. I'm going to try bishop h6. I think d5 might be a poison pawn. Uh, always have to watch the exchange sack. Yep, just as I said that black does it. Let's take here first. I really like the look of this knight f5 move if I can land it at some point. Um... Okay, do I take or knight f5? Knight f5 black probably can ignore it. Ooh, I don't know, actually. Knight f5, take, queen g5, king h8, rook g1, rook g8, queen h6, knight h7. Black seems to be holding there. Uh, let's just play the practical move. And if bishop takes d5, I think I'll play h5. Okay, he goes there. But that leaves this hanging. Do I want to take that? Hmm, decisions. Feels like I might want to play for the attack here. Uh, I'm going to play... I'm going to keep the queens on. Spending a little too much time, but there have been simplifications. Mm hmm, okay, let's grab this now. Queen c4, I think I can play b3 or something. Okay, now knight f5 is a more significant threat, because this knight doesn't have a defender on e7. So knight f5 takes, queen g5 is looking good. First, I can still play knight f5 here, actually. But now let's first play this move. Safety first, right? Now check. If black doesn't take, I can come into h6 anyways, like in the event of king g8, let's say. So I think this knight will be captured soon. Okay, so... Let's do what I was saying I was going to do. So knight h5. No. Okay, there's no rook g1. Uh, let's just take. Yeah, rook g1 is still not possible. Maybe black will play rook c8, something like that. Rook takes d5 is a, is a threat. Or is it? Not really yet. Not quite yet. Bishop e4. All right. So I have check perpetual ideas, but obviously I would like more. Check and take. Maybe with rook d5 in the mix. Ooh, yeah, I like that. I'm going to check. This looks close to winning. Take and rook d5. I think he sees my idea. Yeah, and there's no checks. I can go check, and then there's got to be some sequence that mates here. Yeah, he's going to sack. But this pawn is a goner. Uh, let's get the king over just to assist. Okay, let's go here. Let's attack that rook. Attack some stuff here. I think this pawn is poisoned. Check. Okay, let's take this. It's a really good pawn to take off the board. Push this guy. 
bring this over. That rook is running out of real estate. Go here, invade, h8 is covered. And just push this. Okay. And I left myself enough time here. Getting in with the king. Mm, just got to make sure not to stalemate. Okay, sure, I had mate faster there, but got the job done. I'm actually pretty happy about how I played that game. Yeah, a couple moments where with my normal time management that you guys often see in these videos, I would have let it go. <laughs> I might have thought for too long. You know, I think a good example of that is rook takes e7 somewhere around here. So I'm glad I kept the queens on because this knight f5 motif was, was popping up a few times. I wanted to play it right here, but it just seemed prudent to play b3 first. So, all right, pretty happy about that one. Once again, playing five games. Thanks to those of you who have given me positive feedback about the five games. That seems to be the sweet spot. And it amps me up, too. I really enjoy playing five games, no matter what happens. I want to go five for five in one of these, for sure. Hopefully multiple of these videos. All right, Lowish Monkey is next. Let's play a Sicilian. Oh, we're playing Diddy Kong again. I think I've played Lowish Monkey before. All right, I'll play a Classical. Okay, bishop e2. I generally don't mind facing this line. I think black has pretty good counterplay. Knight f3 and knight b3 are the main moves here. Yeah, castle. Usually they play bishop e3. Uh, okay, so let's play a5. This looks like an anti-positional move because it does weaken b5, but there's some nice ideas involved with this. Uh, now, let's play bishop e6. You can often get ready to outpost a knight here is one main idea. So do I want to do that now? I think I'll just take. And maybe rook c8. So both of us have some weaknesses in the center. That's not uncommon in these situations. Uh, could go to e5. I think I will. b4, also always a tempting outpost. Okay, now knight d7. Let's play knight d7. Reinforce e5. I am allowing knight d5, but I'll just trade for the bishop if that's played. Okay, interesting. Let's play queen b6, target this pawn. If there's a trade here, I won't sweat it. Knight b5. Okay, knight c5 looks decent here. A couple of loose pawns for white. Possible trades in the center. Double capture on e5 and e6. Okay, bishop f3, daring me to take on a4. Could also take here, and presumably white's going to take with a pawn. I don't see what's wrong with taking on a4, so let's play it. Maybe take, take, take d6 is the idea, but that seems loose. It seems like the bishop on f4 might hang at the end of that line if there's multiple trades on d6. The bishop, yeah, will hang here. Okay. This seems forced. Not going to worry. Same issue for white. Takes. I can take with the pawn. Could also take with the knight, actually. Okay, so this leaves this a little bit loose. Could I take and play bishop takes c4? That's interesting. Or even knight takes c4? Ooh, I like the look of that. How does white defend... That knight on b5, that's looking juicy. Any tactical complications? I don't think so. I think this is going to net me another couple of pawns. Yeah, take with the knight, because it's just hard for white to defend this. You can't go to d5. Also, the knight covers a5, which is super nice. Most likely, white will move the queen. I'll take, and they'll play knight d4, if I had to guess. Probably go after my light square bishop, but... Yeah, I should be up a couple pawns here. OK, 
Okay, queen c3, could throw in bishop f6. No need, just take. Okay, queen b4, queen b2, maybe queen b2. Queen b2. Hmm. Now let's go queen b4. Okay. Hmm. Let's play g5. I'm trying to deflect the bishop back so I get knight d2. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure how good queen b4 was. It was probably a little dubious, but it worked out. Okay, uh, rook, B th rook c3. I'd like to protect that pawn if I could. Let's do it this way. Just get ready to double. Okay, yeah, now definitely trade the rooks. That's an autopilot decision. Take, go here, go here, protect f7. Rook here and push coming. This bishop's pretty much out of the game for now. Bishop d4, rook d3. Double attack. He actually had bishop h5 check there, but I don't think it would have changed anything. Um, let's go here. He can push his pawn. Check. 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 Bring the king in. Okay, let's do the old... This is just like king and rook against king. Okay. Yeah, he could have played bishop h5 check... Right when I played here. But fortunately for me, that's not mate. Even though his bishops do cover a lot of squares, I can play king g8. Black, black is still winning. So I feel pretty good about that game. The only move that I'd probably question in hindsight was queen b4. Yeah, I probably didn't have to play that. Probably just queen b6 or something. Queen b2 was another move I considered, but I didn't like this. Kind of similar. Lining up against the, the knight and the pawn on b7. Okay. So two for two. And that a5 move I was talking about, if you guys play the classical Sicilian or those of you who play the Nidorf or even some other lines of the Sicilian, you'll know this a5 push is a good way to attack this knight on b3. Because often you do induce a4 and that gives up the b4 square. Black can often look to post a knight on b4. There's some traps, like for instance, say instead of king h1, white had played bishop e3 and the game goes like this. a5, a4, bishop e6. Uh, let's say queen d2. Knight b4. This can easily get annoying for white with these two points a little bit sensitive. Black can play rook c8. There might even be a exchange sacrifice idea in the air with knight takes e4 coming. It's pretty nice for black. All right. So let's get back in there. Keep this rolling. All right. Uh, tough opponent here. 2572. But nevertheless, we're keeping it rolling, keeping the time management to. Uh, I'm just kind of confused, sorry, about what he's doing here. <laughs> keeping the time management to uh, a proper degree, aka very fast. I'll probably play e5 here. Mm, let's go knight, e knight e1, maybe looking for f4. I can also reposition the bishop, but okay, let's play e4 here. Yeah, and just expand with the pawns. Bishop h3 is something I could try, or f5. f5 seems interesting. Let's do that. Stake some space in the center. Because now it seems like he's a bit buried here. Let's play bishop e3. Normal looking move. This bishop in particular is pretty buried. Let's play b4. Mm -hmm. I'll take with the queen. I'm expecting a5. I'll play a3. Bishop a6. I think I'll play knight b5. Okay, he's looking for maybe bishop a6 when uh, knight b5 isn't as appetizing. So, okay, I'm going to step back here. Be nice if my pawn was on c4, because I'd really like to go c5 in this position, but 
This has some venom as well because I might be able to play bishop takes g5 down the stretch. Let's play against this. Let's bring this over. Hmm, he takes, interesting. Okay, now here, maybe I can go bishop b5. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, let's bring this up. I'm going to try for this c4 plan I was mentioning. If he plays bishop a6, I think I'll play c4 anyways and be okay with black trading. Yeah, black's just kind of digging in here, but I got to believe I'm better in this position. Let's play it back. Yeah, let's play c5. No reason to delay. Big space advantage, c6 on the horizon. Black might have to take, yep. Probably bishop f8. Black needs to get this bishop back in the action somehow. Knight c8, okay, so maybe looking to blockade on d6. So bishop b5 is something I'm examining here. Bishop b5, c6. I'll try it. c6, bishop c4. Seems like I'm going to be a bit better in the resulting position. Whoa. Hello. <laughs> All right. So Aaron, if you're watching, my student Aaron, uh, he commented in one of the recent videos. He said, it's heartening to know that title players blunder pieces like this. And absolutely, you just saw 2572 hang his queen with no prompting. So yeah, it happens. And in fact, I think it was two videos ago when Aaron made that comment. I had two games in a row where uh, a player hung a minor piece like right in the opening. It's pretty high rated. So yeah, those are, the sort of, those are the sort of errors I wanna induce. You know, This is pretty rare for this to happen, but keep putting the pressure, keep playing fast. Pretty good time management, I would say, in this one. I had a little, little over half my time remaining. Good stuff. I do think though against f6, I maybe should have looked for something more dynamic. Uh, turned out to be okay, but never play f6. It seems like there should have been a way I don't want to say to punish that move, but gain a bigger advantage than I did. But then again, I'd have to think about it, so I'm not going to kill myself on that decision mentally. Okay, attacking the pawn. Uh, let's play queen c2. It's castle. Probably d5 is coming. Hmm, no d5. Okay, uh, let's play bishop f4. Sometimes I think it can be useful to retain the bishop here. I wonder if d5, if I can play c5 and try to trap this piece. Okay, let's play, let's play rook d1. Mm -hmm. I'll develop the knight here. Next, I should probably look to play e4. That seems to be one of the more direct ways to play. First, I'm going to play this, though, just to overprotect. Yeah, and probably now play e4. Just so if there's a double trade here, the, the pawn is not hanging. Okay, rook there. Let's step back. I'm just a little leery of c5 with this rook lined up with my queen. Mm -hmm. Bishop there. Well, I don't mind if he trades his bishop for my knight, so let's encourage that. Also opens up this bishop. Could be helpful. Uh, b4, maybe c5. b4 looks kind of nice. Yeah, let's expand. I'm thinking maybe... Play c5 and look to play bishop d6. It's a pretty strong piece. I think he's going to try to force one of these pawns up to fight back. But just a gut feeling that this is going to favor my bishops. Okay, he does that first. c5 looks tempting, but I think this e5 move might be decent for him. Let's, uh, let's reposition just for a moment. Line up with his queen. Okay, he goes back. I can also think about this move. It's interesting too. B5, and if he takes, take here. It's interesting. I think I'm going to do that. Switching course. This just seems quite promising to me. Yeah, I might even, even think about E5 here. Nah, let's take though. This bishop's very awkward. 
open the position. Bishop c7 could be a problem, like if he plays knight h5. Yeah, weird situation with both sides having a set of double isolated pawns. Let's take this way. Looks very good for me, though. Play d6 next. I might bring the rook in here, but I have moves like bishop f1 against that. Uh, also, just moving the knight. Or taking here. I can take on this on this square. Yeah, that must be better. I still retain bishop f1 as an option, which is kind of sneaky. Okay, so he does that. Must watch my back rank now. Fair. Okay, let's go knight f3. Ooh, did I allow rook takes f2? And knight g4? Too little time to calculate. I think this is okay, though. Not sure knight d5 was best. Maybe now I can play rook e1. And bishop f1 is still a threat. I can still take here. He can still take here. Take and queen e3. It's not the end of the world because I have rook e1 against rook takes f2. But, okay, he did not notice that. Bishop f1 is going to almost force him to play that. But I don't think it's good anymore. No, I think this is actually okay now. Because take, my king can run to g2. If he takes and plays queen e3. Yeah, he could sack the uh, bishop like he's doing. Or the exchange, rather. Hmm, let's go knight e5. Try to dislodge that knight from d7. Also try to play a little bit faster. I think I can just push. Discovery. Supported by this and queen. Yeah, it's game over. Ooh, okay. Yeah, let me see. I think he had rook takes f2. So right here, rook takes f2. It's a nice tactic. Maybe I'm seeing this tactic because in the climbing the rating ladder video I posted the other day, uh, against Jensu. This was an idea around the f2, e3 squares that I actually missed in the game. But yeah, take in, there's this check here. And notice that all these squares are unavailable thanks to the queen and also the bishop controlling f1. So if this, we get the classic uh, smothered mate, right? Everyone's favorite checkmate. So that was possible. So I probably misplayed it a little bit in the middle game there. Again, I don't think it would have been immediately losing for me had he noticed that because... Okay, so say this is played here. I can play rook e1 and try to trade pieces, but if that if this move is possible, it looks like it's the best attempt for black. All right. Four for four. Last game of the session. Coming up. Playing Omsk. Omsk 2019. Another white game. Sticking with my standard repertoire, D4. Okay, well, let's play let's play this where you get all three pawns out here. Go knight c3. Okay, King's Indian by transposition. We'll play the same ish. Let's play it with bishop g5. I often play it with bishop e3, but just thinking about a slightly different setup. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's play knight g3. Interesting. Okay. I've actually faced this recently. Uh, I'm going to take... Yeah, I think black does generate some decent compensation in this situation, but maybe with the rook on e8, it's a little awkward for black because if black plays bishop a6 here, there may be some trouble with uh, bishop takes f6 coming up with the d7 knight hanging. So yeah, I think this would be better if the rook was on f8, strangely. Avoid that pin. 
So maybe the why that's that's why black's pausing right now. Hmm. Okay, so he's gonna actually challenge me. I think I should take him up on that. He's probably gonna sack the exchange. I would predict knight takes f6. No, he takes there, but that's losing a piece, right? Unless he's gonna play after knight takes, queen takes. Okay, interesting. Yeah, you can try this. Oh no, but my rook is defended here. So I can safely take. Thanks to this knight, he's not gonna get two rooks for the queen. Okay. How often do you see a knight on h1 this early in the game? Move 19. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, interesting point of comparison there. So those of you who study openings and think about openings actively, which is hopefully a lot of you, even if you don't know the theory in the opening, just trying to think logically about why you're playing the moves in the opening that you are, a lot of times you'll compare the position you have on the board in a game to your mental database of openings and your opening knowledge. And yeah, it just occurred to me that I've seen this position or something very close to this and played against it where Black Gambit's the pawn in the style of a Banco Gambit. But I think almost always the cases I've seen, the Rook is on F8. And I asked myself, like, what could be the difference there? Is, is it a difference that I can take advantage of? And yeah, I think Bishop takes F6 is the key difference with this Knight. Uh, pinned because normally he would just play knight takes f6 and I wouldn't want to give up my dark score bishop the dark score bishop is quite a valuable piece for white in the same structure because you're committing so many pawns to light squares so hence your dark squares are weak but yeah after this black has some problems so it looks to me like black should play knight takes f6 and sack the exchange and I'm sure the computer will say that white's better here white's up an exchange plus a pawn but in a blitz game this would not be super easy for white to play because, again, I'm pretty weak on the dark square, so i got to be careful. Okay. Well, I can happily chalk up the 5 out of 5. Uh, the score is nice, but I felt like the games were flowing, and that's even more important to me. So, yeah, I can't actually think of a single decision in this session. Let me just pull up my archive real quick, which you can do on chess.com by clicking this little icon. It looks like a folder icon on the bottom right side in live chess. But yeah, just mentally scanning the games. I only played one title player, which was Tranador Brazil in the first game, but I can't think of a decision that I really belabored in this session, and I think that's already a win. I'm sure someone will point out somewhere where I spent 30 seconds or something in a move, but I think even if I did spend a little more time than normal, it was justified in this session. So, all right, good session in the books. I'm going to keep this series going, and thanks for the positive feedback on this, guys. Let me know if you have additional feedback. All right. Thanks, guys. I'll be back again soon. Bye.